everyone, it's Red Baron here. Today I'll be discussing divinities, uh, so the great void divinity, what type of immortals you're going to want to focus on, and then some recommendations on builds for your array. So when you open up your great void divinities, you're going to have a few different things you can click into. The first one is going to be spiritual roaming. And this is going to be where you're going to be using all of your soul guide tombs in order to summon the immortals. There are a whole list of immortals that you can gather from. Um, there are a bunch of legendary ones, a bunch of epic, and then there's different classes as well or different races that you can pick from. So these are all going to be things you're going to want to consider while you are trying to gather up all of these tombs prior to the event that happens every couple months. The biggest thing you'll want to know is that you want to save, especially if you're free to play, your Soul Guide Tombs. Like I mentioned, there is an event that comes every two to three months. And during this event, you're actually able to pick the immortal you want to focus on, and you have a lot higher chance of that one dropping. So if we look at the percent chances here, you have a 1.64% chance of getting a legendary hero, and there are all of these different legendary heroes that you can get. So the odds of you getting the one that you want are very, very, very low. So this is important to consider whenever you're obtaining all of your tombs prior to the event, and then you'll want to start using them once the event has begun. The next part of the Great Void Divinity is the ultimate skill. So this is going to be where you have all of the immortals. So you can see here the ones that I have unlocked, the ones I haven't unlocked. Um, you can click into these. And each of them have different abilities and different skills, which I'll go over which ones you want to focus on the most and how it all works. You have the array, and with the array, you can put your immortals in to be used as an ability that gets added into your ability bar. Each of your immortals will have a specific skill that unlocks once you have them at six stars, and it will tell you what their ability is and their ultimate. You can have up to five all in the same array. And then you have the Immortal Banquet, which uses your Immortal Friends, gets you some awards. This is a daily, so you'll want to come in here every daily. You hit Recommend Immortals. It's going to put in your highest leveled Immortals and which ones are going to give you more bonuses. And then you can just hit Invite. And they're going to go off and have a party for eight hours and then give you the awards that you see down here at the bottom. These are your immortal friends. You can think of these as a type of technique boost. So they're going to be providing your character stats. And you'll unlock these after completing different tasks as you're leveling in Void Break. The first important piece to know about with your ultimates is going to be the five different buffs that the races give you. And then what you should focus on based on whether you're Magicka or Caporia. So the winged race is going to be giving more defensive abilities. You have the demon race, which is going to be giving you offensive abilities. You have shaman, which is going to be for control and debuffs. You have the rakshasa, which is going to be for stat bonuses. And then human, which is just cultivation resource bonus. When you're picking your array, Magicka users are going to want to focus on three winged and two shaman in their array. The reason being that you get a factional joint strike, which gives you an extra barrier that does not consume any of your MP, which is going to be beneficial in providing you with pretty much an additional shield. Caporia is going to want to focus on a few different ones. They can do three demon. Three demon is going to give you an extra attack to all nearby enemies. You can do three shaman, 
which also is an extra attack um, and an increase of damage based on all effects that your character and the other character has. Or three shaman and two winged to give you the same ultimate ability or factional joint strike ability, but the two winged are going to be giving you a little bit more defensive ability. In the beginning, you're going to want to focus primarily on winged, demon, and shaman when you're leveling up your immortals. The best immortals to level are going to be Yang Jin. Yang Jin provides an extra block that can last either up to two blocks for five seconds, um, which is pretty beneficial, pretty much negating two attacks from your opponent. And this is going to be a very good block skill for Magicka users. Another good immortal is going to be Six-Eared. He's demon type. He provides um, an attack on two enemy targets and reduces the enemy's remaining shield strength by 30%. So this is a very, very, pretty much essential immortal for Kaporia to reduce Magicka user's shields. Another good immortal is going to be Bai Z, who's a shaman. She provides a high attack bonus and gives you Fracture, which also is going to increase damage to shields, which is another big bonus, especially for Kaporia. Another good divinity is going to be Barry the Bear. He is a pretty cheap, easy-to-level divinity. That's going to give you a nice CC with Frozen, as well as some extra damage. And as you can see here, I have gone with the Shaman route, so that is going to be giving me this extra physical and magical attack to an enemy whenever my array ends. This brings us into our final piece with Immortal Friends. So this is going to be just a pretty quick explanation on which ones to level and how to level them. As you can see, there are quite a few of these immortal friends that you can unlock. And uh, we have a long way to go before we get all of them unlocked. But this is going to be a quick rundown of the ones that I've looked at on their stats to see which ones would be best to get. So first and foremost, uh, you are going to be, as soon as you get into Void Break, noticing this inner demon progression. So there are going to be specific quests you need to complete. So you can, if you want to, focus on these quests. They'll tell you who you need to unlock in order to move past. So for instance, you have to get Sympathica Level 2, with wide bone spirit on this third inner demon in order to move on to the next inner demon and so on. So you can focus on these. So you would want to focus on white bone spirit, on Princess Adelina, and then on white Astra, Yang Jin, and then on the final one, you just need to reach level 180 uh, with your total immortal friends level. But once you've focused on those, here is going to be the order that you're going to want to use while you are pushing all of your immortal friends up. So first, you're going to want to get White Astra to level 21. That's going to be getting you this Cultivation Pill Experience bonus. There are additional abilities that you can do, but this is going to be to min-max the best bonuses that you can get with your Immortal Friends if you are free to play. So level 21 for White Astra. Then you're going to want to go to Princess Adelinda and take her all the way to level 81. That's going to be getting you a watering effect. If you're a whale, you can go ahead and push her all the way to 130 and you get one extra Respira for cultivation. After that, um, you can go back to White Astra. And if you get White Astra to level 31, you're going to complete your Demon Fair quest. Next, you'll want to focus on Hong Fu. And you want to get Hong Fu to level 21. <clears throat> this is going to give you extra Spiritum. 
and an ability damage reduction. So it's just some nice padded stats. You can move on to 41 if you're a whale, but usually just this ability damage reduction is good enough. After Hong Fu, we're going to go to Crane Boy. And Crane Boy is going to be your expensive one. Crane Boy, you're going to want to max out. As you can see, I have completed him. And the reason being is that at level 130, you're going to be getting an extra cultivation pill. So not only do you get all of these bonuses and ability damage to Taoist plus 4%, which is pretty nice. But at 130, this cultivation pill use plus one is going to be very beneficial. So even free to play are going to want to try and get Crane Boy max level. Then we're going to focus on Jin Wei. On this one, you're going to want to push him to 41. That's going to be giving you uh, all the way down to the relic damage to Taoist bonus of plus 3%. The monster damage things are not going to really matter, so do not go past level 41 for Jing Wei. And that is all that I have unlocked, but we're going to continue going down the list so we can see what you should be focusing on. So I have not hit late void break yet. I am pretty close, but I haven't got there yet. Uh, on this one, this is going to be Jing Zia. You're going to want to focus on getting to level 116 because you get this extra cultivation experience, which is going to be nice on top of all these other bonuses. After that, Yu Zunji, you're going to want to take to 66 for the ability damage to Taoist. Hua Fu, you're going to want to take to 66 for damage reduction. Princess Iron Fan, you can take to 36 for a Respira attempt. Now, Respira doesn't give you the most amount of experience, so that's not super important. If you want to save resources here, you can just take her to 16, uh, which will give you a nice relic damage bonus but and avoid the Respira attempt. For 60 yard, we're going to be going to 67 for the Relic Damage Reduction. Monster Damage Reduction, not important. The crit would be nice, but that's going to be very pricey. So for most of us, we just need to get to level 67. For this one, we're going to be going to 117. Again, trying to max out Cultivation Pill Experiences. For Shin, we're going to be going to 67, Ability Damage Reduction. And these are all going to be happening very late on. As you can see, we're in stage wholeness now, which uh, is going to be pretty far away from most of us that have just started in the game. For Daji, we're going to be going to 73 for a Respira attempt to save resources. Free to play may want to stop at level 40. Same reason, Respira just does not give you that much experience. And then here, we'll want to go with Lays Enzi to 129, more cultivation pill experience. Here we can go to, on Dragon Beard, we can go to level 40 for the Relic Damage to Taoist. That's not too important. You could stop at 18 if you wanted to. We're getting into Perfection. This is going to be pretty far away, so we'll probably stop after this one. You'd want to get Cultivation Pill Experience here too. So as you can see, there's just more Immortal Friends that we're not getting to, all the way down to Nirvana, which we're very, very far away from. So we'll get back into those at a later date. That's going to pretty much sum it up on the Great Void Divinities and all of the new features that are in those. Hopefully this was helpful in showing you who you need to focus on and who to level in your immortal friends. That way you can get the most bang for your buck. If this was helpful, like and subscribe. I'll continue making content for all of you guys. And as a reminder, I highly recommend Save those soul guide tombs for the event that pops up every three months or so.